What do Fresh and Fit, Sneeko, and Little Tekka have in common? No matter where you go, nobody wants to hear them. They're banned. We're back, guys. We're going to behave a little bit. We're going to chill when we're on Twitch. Obviously, uh, you know, we learned. Wait, nigga said stop. Shout we're taking bro. over Twitch. Woo! I hope we don't get banned today. You know what the smile is? That's what's going on. I'm buying my mom another condo. Pero mi morena, ya quiero que esto ve, morena. Eight hours later, they found themselves on a growing list of indefinitely banned streamers on Twitch. Now we know how Twitch gets down, so this isn't necessarily anything new and it might not even be anything long lasting, but this time it's a little bit different. The ADL had to step in and inform Twitch that they need to do something and take action. For those that don't know what the ADL is, the ADL is the Anti-Defamation League who specializes in cleaning up all anti-Semitism, extremism, bigotry, any of the nonsense that exists in language that is either readable or consumable on the internet or really anywhere where all that stuff is consumed. Now the ADL claims to be nonpartisan and I'm not gonna get into the logistics of that, but it seems very timely that all of these streamers seem to be getting banned indefinitely for some of the speech that they're having on Twitch. I'm not talking about just Sneeko, I'm not talking about just Fresh and Fit, but Hassan's top mod, Froggen, also got recently banned from Twitch as well. But we'll get back to that in a minute. Let's go down this ABBA Preach Victory lap because there's some points that stood out to me that are very interesting. One of them, and I gotta congratulate them here is that Abba specifically said that Myron is single-handedly funding his mother's condo with the content that they're able to put out. So that's great. That's fantastic. The other point, and it's a big consistent theme with these content creators that seems to only be heightened by this election season is that they don't really want free speech. See, what they want is the right to say anything or do anything, criticize whoever, and not receive any sort of backlash from it. You can say what you want, but you have to live with the consequences. I don't even think that people understand what free speech is or isn't in these conversations, but it's not what they're displaying. This is a private company who has private interests. You can't just go up in my house. You can't knock on my door right now, enter and say whatever you want and think that I'm not supposed to respond or take any sort of action depending on what you said. No, I don't like certain things. That's not me impeding on your right to free speech though. That's just me having rules in my private property. Now I will say the Sneeko ban was a little bit interesting though, because Sneeko hadn't done anything just yet. Twitch seemed to prematurely permaban him based off of non-action. But something that I talk about often is that you have a digital footprint, you have a following, it's gonna keep with you wherever you go. Earlier in that day, Sneeko went on a rant about Asm Gold and Twitch's inconsistencies when it comes to their banning. Hasanabi could say America deserves 9-11 and he's getting a round of applause on his birthday by the Twitch staff. Asmund Gold said that Muslims are an inferior people and he got 14 days on his second channel. They packed up Asmund Gold's second alt twitch for 14 days a little slap on the wrist bad boy now there is something to talk about with the inconsistencies and we'll get into that in two seconds but there was an update yesterday that sneeko even got banned from kick youtube still even though his first account got unbanned or something like that that's now twitch and kick which is supposed to be the progressive platform as far as free speech goes this hypocrite is hypocriting now there are no official words as to why he's been banned or unbanned and keeps getting re-banned etc etc Etc. and we probably won't know, but there are some videos out there that can kind of give us an idea as to what he's been doing, specifically some that may or may not involve some minors. I'm not gonna peg that as anything crazy, but it's him doing monkey streams, which I've already said that it's weird to do monkey streams with minors. But every time something like this happens, the most profound words of Walter from Fresh and Fit come to my mind. Getting banned on these platforms is not a good thing. Terrible idea. I don't think I made a mistake. I think I did the right thing. I think you made a mistake. You did things that you want to do you pay the price for it so then it. how is that a mistake if i did what i want to do and i'm happy with the decisions and i told the truth yeah it was difficult but, but that's what i'm saying so i did i never regretted anything that i've done telling the truth you want me to tell people what happened in that room i can say it right now I'll say it it was me luke belmar his brother uh mine wasn't there and yeah, tristan I don't, I don't, yeah, and andrew it was before i got banned i'm mm -hmm. giving the, the full context here right? and they warned me and you're, you're luke, gonna yap luke, for five luke minutes warned you yes you warned me what's gonna happen and i did not and care you, and at some point somebody has to think that this is gonna affect the mental health of these content creators when neon called sneeko it made sense as to why he sounded so depressed on the phone because this is tiring depressing and downright sad at this point sneeko i'm on the stream you got banned i don't think you're supposed to talk to me what do you mean why Bad, right? Nah, man, fuck that. What happened? Uh, fuck, I don't know. I thought you just got a kick deal. Yeah. <laughs>
Wait, well, Sneak, I'm in Miami. What's the word, man? What did you do? What, bro, you're innocent. Yeah, free me, right? Free Sneak on the chat. Sunday with YouTube, Monday, Twitch, Tuesday, kick. Sneak loves to act all nonchalant about these situations. Much of these content creators do. They love to act like it doesn't matter. They don't care. They're saying what they mean and they mean what they say. But honestly, in my perspective, that doesn't mean that you have to say it. No, it doesn't make you weak. No, it doesn't make you spineless. You can stand on business without always stepping on people like i don't understand why that concept doesn't get through their head i think that now dealing with these consequences has a lot of them rethinking their actions time and time again but ultimately they've dug a hole so deep for themselves that they probably cannot get out i'm a kick streamer anyway twitch was just like a little fun thing on the side i wanted to keep the the side streams on there we'll see hopefully i get it back the urge for me to just crash out right now on the whole industry and do the thing and jump up on my seat they don't like me fuck you you don't like I want to do that whole thing right now. I'm glad that we have kick. It's just like, bro, can I get a fuck? Can a nigga breathe? Can a nigga live? No, Sneeko, a nigga can't breathe. It's funny because these guys idolize people like Kanye West or Donald Trump, who they believe to be some sort of free spirited, free thinker that says whatever they want to say and gets away with it. There's two things that are fundamentally wrong with this though, is that one, Kanye West and Donald Trump have grown up in mainstream society. They even have their own separate differences like Trump having a real estate tycoon background and being a trust fund baby essentially. And Kanye West being some genius musician who's built up years of reputation, but even even those guys, if you ask a lot of people, are at the end of their ropes. But this is after putting up 5, 10, 15, 20 years in an industry, improving yourself to be able to provide some sort of value. Sneeko, I'm sorry, as a young 20 something year old, Myron, Walter, Froggen, or whoever else that believes that they can just have the liberty to say what they want, it doesn't work like that. And I don't even think that it's just the companies that are looking at you in this bad light. There has been some conversation that says that some people made some calls, maybe Pokimane, maybe Hassan. If you make enemies, you have to understand that you can't go where you're enemies have power and you have to live with that i'm not saying shake everybody's hands i'm not saying kiss everybody's ass but it does seem a little weird for these guys to be unbanned and then banned indefinitely right after each other while seemingly doing nothing by seemingly doing nothing again i'm talking about in the span in which they were unbanned that will warrant them to be banned now i will say it is disgusting that these platforms seem to be taking some sort of guidance or leadership from outside sources whoever has the bigger bag is going to get the fair share and the one that has the favorable say in these conversations, it's an ex-girlfriend. At some point, I'm going to look at you and say, you've got to stop going back to her, dog. You have to be able to control your emotions. You have to be able to look at that person and say, no, I don't want anything to do with you, even if you ban, unban, this, that, and the third. I don't want any parts of you. Now, like I said before, ultimately, these companies don't want free speech, and that clashes with the goals of any self-respecting company. While these platforms do get to pick and choose who is on there and who isn't, and hey, if you know the rules and you decide to play the game, it is what it is. I find it a little bit hypocritical some of the stuff that's going on in this content creation world. People like Hassan and Ethan Klein get to say some pretty doggone outrageous things. Sorry about not having health care for you. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, burn pits. But the good news is we will be putting a tiny little toothpick flag on your grave. So that'll make it all better. <laughs> You seen those little flags they do? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's like a little toothpick with the American flag. You're like, I have lung cancer from burn pits. They're like, nah, nah, nah. When you die, you get the toothpick. So we're a generous country and we really care about our soldiers out here. But because they have friends, because they've been able to shake elbows and touch babies and all this other stuff of some of these people who make the decisions, they've been able to slide underneath the radar to no sorts of criticism at all. But when somebody like an Aiden Ross or somebody that's on that higher upside doesn't like what you have to say, then they're going to get you up out of here as well, even if it fundamentally clashes with their moral compass of saying free speech should be for everybody. Oh my God, I want my fucking Camaro and no student loans. Fuck you. I hope you get PTSD. <laughs> and I hope you get no health insurance when you get back into a fucking America. And they posted it in my head. I'm like, ah, uh, base? <laughs> like, am I supposed to be, am I supposed to be like, like, I'm not walking back on it. I still fucking agree with it. Aw, uh, base. Now, let me be clear. I thought what she said was, <laughs> it was out there. That's, that's totally outrageous. It's wild to say. But I also do believe that people shouldn't be able to say what they want whenever they want. But I just find it interesting. What's up, y'all? It's OJ. Cookie Run Tower of Adventures is here. And with Google Play Games, I can sync the game from my phone to my
interesting that after I make my sentiments known, I hear these things. I think we're seeing multiple things happen these last, you know, just just these last couple of days, right? I mean, that's kind of the result, you know, the result of a poser bred by another poser. Let's step away from like personal attacks. Let's just get down to like objectivity. The way this individual carried themselves pushed back whatever movement they think they're a part of easily a couple years. Anyone that was supporting Palestine was already getting an enough heat. Now given a take like this, just for the fucking shock factor views. So no matter what side you're on, it's just, it's fucking gross. Now listen, Trainwreck has some points here. I don't necessarily agree with her take. To say that this one person stance pushes back people's movements for years, I don't agree with it all. That doesn't make any sense. But for him to continue on to say that this person is a greedy whale, you're no skilled, you have no morals, and you're never getting unbanned while simultaneously being the one who is over kick, if I'm not mistaken, right? That just doesn't add up to me. She's a terrorist because she hates America and she's wishing bad upon US soldiers. She's a fucking terrorist. She needs to be banned. I don't give a fuck. I speak for what's right. I don't care if this makes me not get unbanned on Twitch. I don't care. This is wrong. I'm the reason why there was a big ADL tweet. Me, yes. I complained about her. Do something. I got her banned. Straight up, I don't care. I snitched. I don't care. Call me a snitch. I don't care. I got her banned. I don't care. And we knew that this pot was going to call the kettle black. I feel like at this point, it's the Spider-Man meme pointing towards each other while simultaneously saying that this platform is bad. The whole foundations of what kick is, you know, Twitch has too much TOS. They have too much censorship. It's no free speech, et cetera, et cetera. You are over here doing the exact same thing, just on the different side of the spectrum. It doesn't make any sense. And then what makes it even slimier is that Aiden does whatever he needs to do in his own willpower to proceed to get her banned while simultaneously just last week he was getting a e date set up with nick fuentes platforming sneeko uh, having andrew T all these people on these different platforms and all of them have all wild ideologies all of them have said the wildest things in the world as he sits there snickers and giggles as this white supremacist nick fuentes says his craziest takes in the world and that doesn't matter that, that doesn't matter to him i think it's sick too that he has this fucking updates page tweeting out him giving out hundred dollar bills to black people and having the bots comment name a black streamer who's done more for the black community than aiden ross shut the fuck up and look i'm glad that they're waking up i'm glad that kick is seeing that this is not a sustainable platform i'm glad that they're saying to themselves hey we can't do this we cannot carry on being a platform that just allows any and everything to happen i just don't want to hear it from them to be quite honest with you it's so weird throwing stones and hiding hands pointing fingers and you got the blueberry dust all all over your face and saying you didn't eat the donut. I just find it strange that they don't hold themselves to the same standards in situations that are similar or adjacent or are even more disgusting. It's weird because of the advertisers. They're watching a deregulated platform X or Twitter in real time become something that nobody wants to be a part of. Advertisers are leaving left, right and sideways because of what Elon Musk has done to it. And hey, they don't want their platform to look like that. There's advertisers leaving. We talked to Bob Iger I hope today. They stop. You hope, uh, don't advertise. You don't want them to advertise? No. What do you mean? So if somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. Go f yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. If you're in the audience. I, I understand that, but there's a reality too. <laughs> right? What this advertising boycott is, uh, is, is gonna do, it's, it's gonna kill the company. And the whole world will know. Those advertisers, I imagine, are gonna say, they're gonna say, we didn't kill the company. They're gonna say, that, they're gonna say Elon, that you killed the company because you said these things and that they were inappropriate things and that they didn't feel comfortable on the platform, right? That's, that's and, what and they're let, gonna say. And let's see how Earth responds to that. Elon is so based, bro. God, he just makes the best takes. While software engineers, other developers, people on the marketing team, people on the HR team are worried about their jobs he can go on stage and just say hey at the end of the day when this ship sinks earth is gonna be the one that says that it was disney's fault not not me not milan musk nah 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 people with money are just so insufferable it literally is crazy and ultimately at some point the money does dry up i, I don't know why rich people believe that they will be rich forever i'm seeing some things with tesla and them dropping the apr on the cars trying to make sure that anybody and everybody has
has access to it. These are very telling things, but that's for another channel to tell you about. And even in these situations, Elon is a hypocrite because he went from doing all of that to doing all of this in order to make sure that advertisers and the money stays on the platform like somebody who realized, oh, uh, duh, I need money, I need money. This is wild as Twitter are now suing advertisers for not advertising on their platform. In particular, they are suing Mars Unilever and CVS Pharmacy for boycotting Twitter, now known as X. X claimed to have lost billions of dollars in advertising revenue because of this boycott. And analysts suggest that their company is worth 71% less since Elon Musk took over. Elon Musk tweeted, we have tried being nice for two years and have got nothing but empty words. Now it is war. Advertisers say that Twitter is too unfiltered, that people can say whatever they want. And there is a big highlight on Twitter at the moment due to what is happening in the United States. Frog and Hassan, Asm Gold, all these people are one and the same. They want free speech, but they don't want the consequences that come with it. They want free speech, but only for a selective group of individuals. They want free speech, but only if it doesn't affect their bottom line. At the end of the day, they are willing to bend, twist, do whatever they can want and say for the sake of their pockets. And if you're not on their side and you say something wrong, then it is what it is. If you're gonna play ball with these people, you have to live with the consequences and actions. At this point, for a lot of these people, they are running out of places and spaces to go in order to get their content off. And maybe they'll land on X, but even X won't have advertisers. So it'll probably be pretty soon before we see one one of these people making manosphere videos or hey bitch get out of there and get in the kitchen video that's it for this rash video i'll catch you guys in the next one